Hello and welcome back to Adobe Live, everyone. Hi. Hello, everyone in the chat and everyone tuning in. My name is Alexis Bustos, and I'll be your host today. And we have a special guest, one a designer I've admired for years and love with all my heart. This is Joanne Lee. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you guys. Awesome. How are you, Joanne? I'm doing great. Doing great. I'm excited to have you here. Um, before Joanne takes the wheel and takes us on an amazing journey through the power of plugins, um, let's go through the schedule really quick to kind of catch everyone up if you're not familiar with the streams. This morning, I think we had Voodoo Val do the Daily Creative Challenge, followed by uh, Bardo Industries going live. And then right before us, Samuel Anderson, all the way from New York City, let us know what the Daily Creative Challenge was for XD. And for those who aren't familiar, and then of course Joanne, right now. And those who aren't familiar with the Creative Challenge, um, please familiarize yourself. It's awesome. Um, Little, little challenges for you to do to just hone in your skills. You get, a, you get, some, sort of, you get some sort of practice. Mm -hmm. You get to explore. These topics are wonderful. And Sam did a great job. He was designing for sustainability all week. Mm -hmm. So all these mm -hmm. topics are around that. Um, and we review them at the end of the stream. So I'm excited for that. Um, and also, stay tuned for in about 30 minutes. We're going to have a chat to win opportunity for you guys to win 100 Sticker Mule stickers. That's a lot of stickers 100. to put all over your laptops and water bottles, your friends. It's going to be great. So stick around, you guys. But without further ado, Joanne Lee, I want to learn everything about you. All right. Um, so I am all different types, types of things. I do different work. Um, but mainly, I'm a UX designer, um, also an art director and visual designer. Literally anything creative that comes my way, I really am just on top of it, trying to, you know, stretch my mind and perspective and the things that I can do. Um, diving into just like the details of like who am I? Who um, are you? you know, aside from being a designer, aside from being a creative, what do I like to do? Um, definitely like to spend time with my dog. It's a tiny Yorkshire Terrier. Um, I like to always just draw around and visualize my thoughts no matter what that might be. Um, I really try hard not to be a perfectionist. Anything that is um, created or done always is a work in progress, so that's always something that I like to keep in mind. Um, I am covering my contact information here, but <laughs> it is um, it is jaylee.work. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. It is uh, jaylee.work and my Instagram handle is Korean Bagel. Um, and I just, yeah, this is just a list of things that I like to do. I really identify with this list. Yeah. Anyone in the chat, if you identify with something on this list, please let us know. Yeah. I think reading the air, uh, what, yeah. a, what a skill to have. Definitely. It's just, you always got to know what mood is, is going on, what you vibe always, it is. What's the vibe? And come in and be like, OK, do I vibe with this vibe, or do I want to change this vibe? I love um, it. I love it. Always be aware. Let's, hi, let's say hi to the chat really quick. You guys are kind of streaming in. Tell us, uh, let us know where you're coming from. Uh, Dennis, Eric, Justin, it's good to see ya. Oh, Justin has a Yorkie, too. His name is Potato. Her name is Potato. Her name is Potato. Um, <laughs> Potato is such a fitting name. Potato is um, a great name. Yeah, understanding dogs is also a really big skill of mine that I'm still working on. I'm still working on. Um, I used to be a dog walker for some really? time. Really? Yeah. Oh. So I, I've met all kinds of dogs. Dogs who don't like to walk. Dogs who like to just sniff bushes yeah. mm. and, and mm. Um, just hang out there. So. Um, Love it. Yeah, definitely. I'm into it. We have some people internationally. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. International Czech Republic. Hello. Wow. Wow. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Arizona, Missouri, Utah. Joanne, you got some design and dog loving I, people yeah, in the I chat am today. So, yeah, I feel like I just connected with all of you guys. Oh, Justin's a black cat named Chives. Chives. Oh, Chives. I love, I love chives bread on any, bagels. Anytime you name an animal a food item, soft spot. Yeah. Egypt, Oregon. Awesome. So many people want to learn about you, Joanne. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. Um, this is some of the work that I've done in the past. Um, I do a range of like printmaking and I do like 3D sculpture making. I've also like designed my own tattoo. And so there's all these different things where. Um, I love that tattoo. 
There's all these different things that I just really like to be involved in. Um, I recently created a um, voice skill for uh, the San Diego Zoo kids, and this is like the poster marketing campaign that I've done for them. Um, I've also created a lot of like you know, food phone scanning applications where you can like scan your food and figure out like how many like um, nutritional value it may have. And so all these blue sky things to blue sky. Um, all the immediate things. And so, a yeah. true creative, a true creative soul. I love this. I love your tattoo you've designed. And thank you. Yeah, Joanne's just a multifaceted artist who happens yeah. to be a designer. I'm just curious, I'm just, just curious. curious. Um, and I'm also curious to just get to know people. I feel like everyone is creative in their own ways um, and there's so much to learn through that. I agree, so. I agree. So where have I worked? What is my experience? Um, I've recently uh, been an art director and so I worked within an agency environment. Um, it was an amazing time. Yeah. I just had a great, great time with an amazing team who have had like different backgrounds of like video producing, of being a studio artist, and I got to pick up all those skills through that. Um, also was an experience designer for Adobe and worked on the account management team, which was really exciting as well. Um, picked up some branding strategy skills as well. And I also just like went to the other side of things and done like an artist residency and did That's a so whole cool. like backpacking trip um, across like Oregon and um, found a lot of artists along the way through that as well. And so the sky is really the limit here. Here. Um, no matter what you call yourself, you can always just figure out a way to pick up new skills and go through there. Inspiring words. Yeah. Okay. So that is the short intro about myself. Um, to dive into the overview for today, um, since we will be using XD to um, figure out how to use all these plugins, all these uh, things that might help your design process be a lot faster. It's also really, really useful to use plugins as a way to just increase awareness um, when you're designing and also enjoying this larger conversation of um, how other designers are uh, utilizing plugins to expand their skill sets. And so with that, um, I'm also going to be talking about the topic of the health and wellness application that we'll be designing. Um, it'll be about narrowing down on a research opportunity as well as looking broadly for um, what else is out there in the competitive landscape and then diving into doing some sketches, getting down and dirty and making all those iterations. Sketches are so important. Yeah, all good ideas happen on pen and paper. Ooh, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Draw. Still time to draw, guys. Definitely, yeah. Um, so for the research opportunity, I wanted to create a health and wellness application to instruct users on any type of home in-home testing experience. So I've listed some examples of what that could be, um, but I think like through any point in anyone's life, they will be faced with an in-home test. Um, and there are a couple of steps to a testing experience that could be um, kind of like a pain point for a user. Mm. And so narrowing, din on, narrowing in on this, um, I will be creating an application that hopes to ease those pain points. I know I've had, you know, these, some of these um, in-home tests are very, very cumbersome. There's a lot of there's a lot of jargon and terminology yeah. people aren't familiar with. It's really ripe for a, a new user experience. Yeah, definitely. And I think that there is such an opportunity within mobile devices for um, someone to have like a small like kind of an instructions pamphlet to take with them wherever they go. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's an on the go type of device where you can um, share with other people if there is a useful tool around, and it's it's always just. It's always just handy to have that with you for any type of um, experience that you go through. Exciting stuff. Yeah, so this is an example of what I'm talking about by an in-home um, testing experience. There's a lot of different components to it um, that can be very overwhelming for a user. And at the bottom here, I've added some quotes of what a user thinks, like, this is a lot of stuff, and like, this is really serious, I don't wanna mess this up. And so um, all of these thoughts kind of enter into your mind, especially if it's the first time um, that someone could be going through in-home um, testing experience. Experience. And this is where I was like investigating more into what is this opportunity here? Um, this is the broad landscape. Let's get more specific and figure out a specific pain point that we can confront and solve. 
So I looked into the instructions uh, slip that is that I saw was a lot, um, that was present a lot in an in-home testing uh, kit. And again, I've added some thoughts mm -hmm. where users would start to feel anxious with all of these different um, components, uh, where it mixes in the instructions along with um, the intended use, along with the storage and handling. And it's, it's not numbered in any way. You can't really tell where to start. Um, you also, like, I... And this I, is like really important yeah. stuff. These are these are the things. These are yeah. these are the places that need design the most. Right, um, right. This is stuff that affects people's health and their well-being right. day to day. Right. Um, it's really, and and it's so confusing. Yeah. <laughs> and just the the name of a test, it always provides anxiety. And right. I've never been just a the great word test, test taker. Just the word test. Yeah. yeah. It, it just means that you only have one shot, and that's it. Um, wow. which is really not true when trying to figure out your health. Um, mm. And so this was where I was like, okay, I'm going to take these words and these instructions and these principles um, that are very useful information and just try to put that into a mobile application, see how that works, see how that might ease the pain. Awesome. Um, Designing for good. Yeah. So this is a couple of existing um, health and wellness applications out there that I had like looked out into and handpicked and I was like, okay, it seems like these are doing really well within um, just the user, user audience. Um, they're scored really high and there's a lot of downloads. And so with this, I'd wanted to find a similarity of what do all of these applications have in common? Mm -hmm. um, is it the colors? Is it the the warnings? Is it the the shape? And or is it that they have like smiley faces yeah, and sad good. faces? We don't know. And so this is where our first plugin kicks in. So I'm going to go ahead and I have these links that are led to the applications. And so the first one is my possible self app. And so this is a health and wellness application and I'm just gonna copy it and then go into my web browser. And I already have it preloaded for you guys. And this is their website. Nice. And so what I'm really looking for is um, what type of branding do they have, as well as um, what are the colors that they're using? How is this made accessible for their users? And why is it gaining a lot of traction? Um, so you're kind of doing this like preliminary research on yeah. one of these like more successful services. Yeah. And you're kind of just doing like a case study of sorts. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just here to be curious about what they do, mm. um, how they call out these informations, and why, why is it so feasible for everyone to understand. So what I do is I just copy the URL, I go back into XD, and I use the plugin Mimic right over here. And it says to enter the URL, hit extract, and it'll pull out the colors, the font names, and the images from the web. And so you can go ahead and extract it, and it takes a couple of seconds. Wow, this is a cool plugin. Yeah, and it says it's ready, and it gives you just like wow. a great overview of like, all of the different colors that it's using, as well as the illustrations and the visuals. And this is a great way for you to narrow down on like, okay, this is what they're using. This is how the look and feel mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, and I just do that for all of the different um, applications that I feel are doing very successfully. Wow. So I've done that with, with Kaiser application. I did that with um, the Headspace application. And I did that with um, all sorts. And it just pulled out a lot of different these are pictures right. and arrows and things. And oh, what I wow. found was very similar is that there's a lot of blues. There's mm. a lot of um, accent colors that are minimally used. Like a lot of these different websites don't use like, you know, yellows. They right. don't use um, bright red. Yeah. And so. Very friendly, very yeah. approachable. Voodoo Val says it's a, um, it's almost like a simple childlike friendly design makes it uh, makes it feel like something is not going to be hard, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, especially when it comes to healthcare. Yeah, right? you don't want to. Yeah, these colors are very important. <laughs> yeah, like colors are the entry point as to how you're going to interact. Like yeah. red always means something immediate, which mm -hmm. is why a lot of restaurants use red. Mm -hmm. um, green is something that portrays um, education. So mm -hmm. a lot of educational uh, websites try to go for that color. Um, mm -hmm. But for I found that for wellness, blue is a really calming color. And um, 
yeah, it's a great tone for everyone to find a good entry point. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. For anyone who's just joining the stream, uh, we're talking with Joanne Lee, and she is currently um, looking through different, diff looking through different apps to kind of understand what's going to be the best. What's gonna, what are the similarities? What are the patterns she's, that are emerging out of these health and wellness apps? Um, and she's showing us some awesome plugins. Right now, let's just take a second to talk about, um, is it, what's it called, Mimic? Yeah, it's called Mimic. Mimic. It's right over here. Mimic's a great, I think, everybody try Mimic out. That's a great one. Yeah, it's just fun to do. I find myself like getting wrapped up and like copying any URL that I want. Right. Like, like, you know, like You're my like, favorite websites. Use? Yeah, and I'm like, why do I like this website so much? Maybe it's because it has like a fun grain going on, or maybe it's like, what's like, what fonts are they using, and can I can I use that as well? Um, so it's a great shortcut. It also like narrows in on your focus. I find that when I'm on the web, uh, I really get distracted with other things while I'm like trying to go for a task. So using this right. plugin inside XD um, helps me have that streamlined workflow. I mean like, okay, I got what I need, now I can move on to the next thing. Mm -mm. Yeah. Tips on tips. Definitely. Distraction is very easy Distraction to happen is while, you're, thing. while you're online. Yeah, that's such a thing. So. With that, with all the information that I got, I um, established a style. I wanted to just move forward with like, okay, I want to definitely take advantage of these blues, but like mix a little bit of green because I want it to be um, kind of this nuanced feeling and this, this color that maybe not a lot of people have seen before. Um, and that's what it. That's what's so exciting about um, using plugins and creating a new application. You get to just discover things that you've never seen before. Um, Typography, um, I really like to just lay it out before I go into it. Um, coming up with what the headline one looks like, headline two, um, what they feel like together is also a great way to see on a style guide. As well as the, as the buttons, like what are their click state, what are their hover states, what are their just um, normal states, and going from there. Cool. Yeah. Style. Establishing a style. Establishing a style, yeah. And not everybody has their own style, so I'm always like, you know, don't be into fashion, be into a style. Always have your own Ooh, style. Yeah. Wow. Fashion, okay. fashion just means you're just keeping up with things, but style means your own taste. You heard it right here, chat. <laughs> don't get into fashion. Get into the. St Wait, don't. What, what is it exactly? Don't get into fashion. Get into the. Style. Get into the style. It's just style. Style guides. Yeah. Um, and so, um, if in any case, I know that there, within the design process, um, there is a persona part to it where you want to accumulate all of this information and this, these pain point needs um, that a user might have and figure out like, okay, what do I want to solve? And so I just like quickly made a very simple um, start to a persona for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to show you really quick on like, in case that you need to really whip up, um, you know, a person's face, mm -hmm. um, and you don't really <laughs> want to, <laughs> and you don't want to just, you know, go on Google search. You want right. to make sure that it's it's a well respected face and it's all signed off, you know, on, on, on the licenses. On the licensing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that's where another plugin comes in. Ooh. So you make a make a shape. You can make a circle. You can make a fun little rectangle, um, or you know a rhombus and you click on it and then you go on UI faces. Ooh. So right here, they give you different sources of stock image um, sources, such as Unsplash, Pexels, which I've used a lot before. Um, and you can also choose gender and the emotion and the hair color. I'm, wow. I would like to ask, wow. like, why these specific things? <laughs> like, it could have easily been like nose shape, but it's hair color. That's interesting, um, you know? And it's only happy or neutral. <laughs> Creators of the plugin, we have some questions for you and why you're choosing these. Yeah. Yeah, everyone has different needs when picking who they want to feature in their app mockups. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think that's a whole, that's a whole, you're opening a Pandora's box of discussion there. Right. Um, so um. I would like to, you know, <laughs> ask for your guys' help. Um, you know, which, which uh, emotion do we want to go for? Do we want to go for happy or the cool neutral? Do we want to go for black, brown, blonde hair? Wow. Um, 
Is there a random, like, is there a button for random? I think you can just press apply. And it just, and you get, whoever comes up. You get a random face. There you, go. Um, you can always double click and adjust and be like, oh, this is too zoomed in. Um, and just go ahead and figure out how you want to make that fit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, happy. Everyone's saying happy. Happy, Thank you, okay. chat. Great suggestion. Happy. Okay, yeah. Whatever you pick, make sure they're happy. Got it. I love rounded corners, always friendly. Don't want anything to sharp and poke, poke you and make all those things. <laughs> you don't want to be poked. No. no. Rounded, rounded corners rounded forever. Corners. Yes. Or at least for now. Yes. At least that's the style. That is the style. That's the style. Okay. Go for male. Okay, we're happy. Um, we'll go for brown hair. Okay. It's very exciting when you're waiting because it, it gives you a little hole to it's wait. It's kind of like someone's <laughs> being born in front of you. Is that what's happening? It's like, it's like, it's kind of what it feels like with this UI, with this UI face generator. Like, out of the seven billion people in the world, <laughs> it is giving you this one face. Unbelievable. I think that's can you incredible. Do can you do multiple um, faces at a time with this tool? Like if you pick uh, like two I, different oh, shapes. Oh, yeah, let's see. Um, so if I click all three of these. Mm. Mm. Maybe because those already. remain unfilled. OK, let's see. See, that's like the really exciting thing about plugins. You got to just really have that. You gotta really just have that ability to be like, let me play around with this because mm -hmm. it's kind of mm -hmm. like it's like a new present, you know. Someone plugins. like comes and they're XD like, plugins. he's a new, he's a new plugin. Yes, people are always making plugins. People are always making adjustments to their plugins, and so you need to be able to um, be flexible with it in your mm -hmm. work style. Mm -hmm. It looks like we can only do one. Oh, yeah, plugins. They're still fairly new. Yeah. Um, I'm sure plenty of people will get like an error, maybe get errors every now and then. Yeah. But for the most part. Yeah, so these are all the, the, the lovely do. faces <laughs> that appear. So moving on from there. <laughs> um, who wants to get sketching? I um, do. I do. I, I always want to be sketching. I, yeah. Look, I'll be that emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so when I go into sketching, I always go, where do I want to begin? I can obviously draw. I can draw my dog, but I need to keep focused and start on this user flow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Health and wellness, right? Mm -hmm. So we always want to start with, I like to always start with like an optional information form. Um, with health and wellness, it's always good to be aware um, that people's information should be sensitive and should pertain to them to have the option to whether opt in their information or not. Because um, it is a very intimate process, no matter what you're testing for, and it's great to be respectful of that. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I want to start with an optional info, info form. If they don't want to go uh, into the info form, we can just skip right into the uh, preparation aspect. How to prepare for your test. Begin testing, and then there's a waiting process if that's what your test requires. Um, identify what your results are, your aftercare process, and then booking appointments. So what booking appointments are is, I wanted to add in this um, aspect where within the application, you can contact your primary care doctor mm. and get set on the help that you need. And so this is something that I I don't see a lot within just like general applications. Maybe if you have like a Kaiser Permanente um, where you're already logged in with your credentials, then like you can get that started. But in terms of just like an all roundness of whether if someone has an insurance or not, um, they can figure out how to go forth with booking. Got it. That's great. Um, Thomas asks, uh, well, he actually just says, I can't draw. Sad face. Is that a problem in UX and UI design? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, sketching is sketching. It's messy. It's yeah. It's awkward. It yeah. does not doesn't have to look perfect. Yeah. And um, what do you, you have any thoughts around that? Yeah. Around just abil drawing ability in yeah. UX design. I definitely think that like sketching entails like. What are your initial thoughts? And don't be afraid to put them down. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are if you're, you know, if you don't have like a pen and paper in handy or you just don't have those um, available to you, then it's really great to just get started with black and white, like 
grayscale uh, wireframes and put some shapes down, label some things, and see how it flows. Because um, once seeing the idea that you have in your head in front of you, um, then you can get started and like, okay, I have all these materials and I have these thoughts. How am I going to go forward um, with going forth to the next step? Yeah. And drawing's just faster. Sketching is just can be very fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've done some like pre sketches for you guys just to show like how I how I like to go ahead and um, do some sketching. And so right here, I like to create like this overview process of like um, what are the steps mm -hmm. that are required um, to go through uh, testing for an in home experience. And then moving forward into using just lines and like progress bars, playing around with what that might look like. Um, being like, okay, this is the overall layout and this is for sure the information that I wanna put in right. this next couple of screens um, and figuring that out. Right, and I mean the drawing and what you draw necessarily isn't gonna be the final, final look and feel of your app, but it's more um, about getting those what it's the material you're putting into these yeah. into these ideas, these, yeah. this this layout. Yeah, um, it never is. Um, even if you do get to like the final round of a wireframe, mm -hmm. or, or you're like, okay, this this feels done, you will always find reasons and ways that you're like, oh, I actually want to make this component different. I actually want the arrow to be over there or the lines to be over here. Um, so right now I have these like checkbox uh, situations going on. But now that I look at it, um, you know, when you're holding in your phone, your thumb pr probably might not reach all the way to that um, top left box right here. Right, yeah. So I'll probably have to change that into some other um, call to action so that people can easily go through and click and check the box. So yeah, for images, I always put in just like a box of placeholder because I don't want to spend too much time on wireframes. That's like a really great yeah. um, tactic to use. Be like kind of just time yourself, set a timer if that's what you need, um, and really just pump through it. Mm. Yeah. That's great. A timer on your, mm -hmm. maybe like each section deserves like amount mm -hmm. of time that mm -hmm. you're, you're allowed to think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is kind of the aspect that I was thinking about for like getting connected to your healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. um, and so providing your last first and last name. And I really am not sure about this structure right now, but I just did it anyways. I was like, okay, you know what? My, you know, perfection is not the, the key here. No, it it's is not. Just Are you using a, um, like a temp, uh, do you have printed screens? That, that yes. would probably help with any new designers who are kind of yes. new to wireframing and sketching. Yes, so right here, if I move, this oh uh, yeah that's I a just, great tip yeah I just, just found this. a bunch of those yeah I just found this on Google I typed in um, wireframing like sheets because nice. um, personally if I don't have like a template I get so caught up into drawing the phone right I don't oh my gosh screen. does anyone else have this problem I'm like oh my this phone box isn't correct I gotta <laughs> I'm gonna go back yeah how is that not uh, interesting yeah things so, you learn after so having a template and just like printing just like this little phone, mm -hmm. just, just so you mm -hmm. have it. So you can just take, so all of your brain power can go into just like yeah. diagramming out these boxes. Yeah, or you can um, print it out, cut out the phone, and actually put it into someone's hand mm. because these phones are actually scaled to um, how your actual phone dimensions are. Um, and so actually just, you can bring it in front of someone. And so be like, can you just like, yeah, can you just pretend, click through this, um, and then. I love that. I love that. Give me some feedback. Um, Jeremiah is asking, Yes. how do you scan your wireframes directly mm. or through phone or like? Um, so I use Adobe Capture for churning drawings into vectors. Um, they're a really good tool just to, if you want to create your sketches into like SVG illustrations, mm. Adobe Capture is a really great source. Um, I also use Microsoft Scan. I think that's the tool for it, where okay. it um, captures a picture of your paper and then it warps it to the, um, make sure that the dimensions are straight on your phone mm -hmm. and also that it's not too um, dull of a picture. And then I just drop it into here. So that's what I do. Yeah. And I'm sure some people just use their phone. Yeah, yeah, I, that's awesome. I use my phone camera. That's also a wonderful. Um, we have about six seconds till chat and win, you guys. We're gonna try something different today. We wanna do a virtual wave. So chat to win today yeah. is everybody type in wave and we're just gonna do a, a virtual wave. And we're gonna be waving up. So we'll be right back. All right, stand by.
ready? Wave. Wave. Did it work? Did we get a virtual wave going in the chat? All right, everyone, just chat to win to win these 100 Sticker Meal stickers. There we go. Shauna, wave. Wave, wave. Cornelian, wave. 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 Derek, wave. wave. Thomas, wave. Lindsay, wave. Amanda, wave. Jennifer, wave. Everyone just wave. I love it. Oh, it's working. It's totally working. Lindsay, wave. Devin, wave. Okay, let's get ready. And then us, ready, go. Okay. One more. I can do a million of these. I can do so many. This is also a really a good, good stretching thing. It feels really um, good. Yeah, keep chatting, guys. You're going to chat to win. We're chatting. We're winning. 100 Sticker Mule stickers. What can you do with 100 Sticker Mule stickers? You can do so much. Give us 100 people. Oh, Thomas. Congratulations. You've just won Sticker Mule stickers. Great yeah. service. We've all used them. We've all stuck them on our uh, computers or They're water really bottles from time to time. They're very good quality. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations. And everyone else in the chat, you've also won with Adobe Live 19, you get 10 sticker mule stickers for a dollar. So keep waving. Maybe we'll do a bunch of wave stickers. Thomas, maybe you should make a bunch of stickers that say wave and just put them on things. That'd be great. I love it. Good job, everyone. Love it, love it. Okay. <laughs> Are there any new people joining in? Maybe we can refresh them on what yeah. we're doing. For anyone who is just kind of coming through the chat right now, we're here with uh, Joanne Lee, and she is taking us through her wireframes for a healthcare app. Um, she's also described to us a couple yeah. different plugins. A Mimic is one, and UI Faces. And um, Joanne, let's just keep going. Yeah. Let's just keep rolling with this, yeah. this party train. Definitely, yeah. So one thing that I want to point out when going from sketches to actually doing a grayscale wireframe, what those benefits are, um, is there's a way that you can actually increase the accessibility aspect of uh, designing a mobile application. You never know who is going to use use your app that you create, and you always want to be aware of um, their needs and also like the differences in how they're going to use the application. So I want to talk about color and how that is something that I've recently learned about. So I've created this very basic uh, login. It, I just created it in like five seconds, and we've all been faced with this page where it was like, put in your ID number, put in your email, put in your password, uh, what is the verification number that we sent you via phone or via email? Um, and then there's either a submit or there's probably just like a, like a cancel. So from here, sometimes you would, you would enter in your um, information, you would hit submit, and then it would give you back, it would give you back some kind of error. So maybe in this case, it says, it says error. And in most cases, you guys might be familiar with seeing boxes highlighted as, as red to tell you that it is an error. But for some people who might be colorblind, some people who have um, a hard time differentiating between colors, they won't know where these errors are popping up. Mm. So it's important to always write down in words, what these errors are. It might sound redundant to have both color and both mm. text, or you can have an icon where you can go into your plugins right here and look up an icon to indicate, um, you know, like a caution error. But it's always, always, always important to put in verbally um, where these errors are popping up. And so that is a great way to always catch yourself before um, you go to color first. And so I just want to share that with you guys. Yeah, that's great. That's a great tip. Um, include talking about inclusive design and making things accessible. Do, did did you learn that from somewhere? Like where where do you feel like you yeah. you feel like that's been used before? Has it happened in other projects? Yeah, Have you I've, tripped up at all? Or? I've definitely used it in areas where it was where I was just putting I just put it in front of people. I right. just placed my ideas in front of someone, and they were like they're like. Um, like I see that there's an error, but I don't know where. And Interesting. I'm like, why? I was like, why didn't why didn't you see that there was like a red box? It's like right in my face. And then so I I asked them more questions, mm. um, and they're like, oh, I actually didn't see that color. It, you know, it can be a matter of that the color is too small of a presence on the screen, um, and they're like, I just didn't catch it at first. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, oh, I see. And then someone had given me a resource of like, you should type in like designing for accessibility just in your regular Google search. 
and there are all of these sources where uh, designers have written like seven different ways to always be aware of accessibility. And the first one is always color. Um, to never assume that color is going to be the way that gives a user direction, but rather using both text and color. That is really, I, you know, and there's a lot of different tools out there. Um, I think there's even a plugin that mm -hmm. helps with that. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll get into that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, just doing, I think it's so important, just doing what Joanne did, just type in access, designing yeah. for accessibility, and there are just countless resources nowadays. Yeah. Um, Jennifer is leaving us some uh, references in the chat as well. I love that. Um, and then at the end of the day, making sure the people who are using your app are in the room yeah. while you're designing it. Yeah. And, and finding them yeah. and user testing with them um, for something like a healthcare app. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. It's, it's even more imperative. It's even more important. Definitely. Um, um, I've also like to use this plugin right here where it's called Icons and Symbols. And at any point, especially when you're wireframing or when you're just doing the, the last stages of designing your application, it's always nice to just have um, an access to all these different kinds of icons. So if you don't want to use the word arrow, you can go in here and put in um, an icon to indicate that. So that is something that right. is useful. And this is all visual, you know. It's a whole yeah. other ball game when you get into yeah. um, people who are deaf of hard of hearing, and that's a whole that's a whole other yeah. way of accessibility exactly. of, of being accessible, things being accessible to people. Yeah. But for right now, we're going with a, a visual, visually impaired, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. accessible screen. Yeah. Yeah. So I went forward and I went ahead and made these sketches into a grayscale wireframe for you guys. Um, definitely haven't named the app yet because I wanted to do that with you guys. Um, and I haven't put color in yet because I wanted to also do that with you guys. There's um, a lot of different things that I would like you guys' help on. Um, and I just put in this tone and voice throughout all of this. Um, something that is calming and soothing. Um, the first, the second, uh, screen right here says learning about you will help us offer the best support you need. So this is the aspect within this user flow that I had mentioned um, right here where it says optional info form. So that is the entry point to that. I'm just gonna copy it here so that we have this reference here. Nice. Yeah, and so this is optional, right? And so we wanna make sure that there is this uh, skip opportunity for someone just to be like, I don't wanna really go through this. I can always come back to another time. Um, and so these are the screens that I went forward with doing. And so I'm just gonna walk through what the structure of the application is. Okay. So for right here, we're gonna go into preparation. If someone clicks, um, skip, skip through all of these. And they're like, I don't want to put my health in insurance provider yet. And I don't really want to share where state I live in. Um, you can always go into here. And there's a materials checklist. So what I've noticed within an instructions mm -hmm. um, page, they always go, do you have all these items? And make sure that they're in front of you, that make sure they're on a surface that you can always easily access. Um, and so I'm like, okay, this sounds like something that is like a to-do. Like it'd be a great like checklist that you have in front of you, um, separated between screens. So place in front of you, test tube if that's what it is, or test stick, uh, disposable bag, bag if that's uh, what your test requires you to have. Um, and it also gives you an additional uh, like if these things are you know, opened already or contaminated, um, a contact info is something that would be very useful with an application. It can just go right in and order a new test. Um, and so that's the materials checklist. Secondly, I wanted to go into this idea of making sure that you are mentally mm -hmm. and bodily aware before you go into a test. Um, Make sure that you are in a quiet space and remember to breathe. If you're not feeling ready, take a break and resume when you're ready. Mm. Um, I and think why do you feel like this this yeah. copy and this um, this tone? Why are you why are you landing with this tone? Yeah, I'm landing with this tone because when I saw through like looking at Headspace. Mm. Um, Looking at all those meditation applications, the reason why they're so successful is because they they come to your level of providing a conversation with you. Um, they don't they don't try to tell you what to do in terms of like step stepwise, but they do try to relate to you. Like, okay, 
in this moment when they're getting their material, materials ready, um, she, they probably will also be very anxious or they're probably really nervous. This is probably their first time. It's always good to assume that um, the user might be feeling um, some sort of uneasiness. Just always to take into account what the user's feeling. Yeah. I think just gen that's something, just yeah. that piece right there is something like a lot of designers forget. Yeah, you know. yeah. Um, so that's a great. That's great, Joanne. Yeah. So right there, it also I put in a button there because I was like, okay, if this person may not be ready and needs a moment to relax, um, they don't have to click this button yet. They can close out on the application, um, do whatever they need to do, and then come back in, and the screen will be right there for you waiting, um, and you can go ahead and press begin when you're ready. That's awesome. Yeah, and so these arrows right here, I've also found that through the icons and symbols, I just type in arrows. What a great plugin that one is. Yeah. That Any, one's pretty that one's pretty great. Yeah. Anytime that I need anything, it's just there. Like if I need a home, it gives me a home. <laughs> Jeez. That's beautiful. Um, Thank you for the home icon. If I'm symbols. hungry, it gives me food as well. Yeah. Um, and so that is what I was thinking about in terms of like copy. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys see, but in the back here, I've added these like wave elements. I can make it a little darker so you guys can see. Mm. But these are like these different wave elements that I've used creating, um, using the pen tool. Um, and I, I was always reminded by, I was just reminded by the ocean, how like water waves really calm me. Oh. Um, Cause it just has a really smooth flow to it. And I was like, I kind of want to use this metaphor um, within this application and see how that goes. Um, and so that, that is the sense. visual element just that I'm relaxing. I, yeah. I like this. I like where it's taking us. Yeah. Definitely. What relaxes you, Alexis? Oh my gosh. What relaxes me? I think um, the ocean definitely does as well. Music. Mm -hmm. Music's a big relaxing element. Yeah. People in the chat, what relaxes you? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what we're talking about right now, as well as the healthcare app Joanne is currently creating for us with XD, with a slew of plugins, and we are just getting started with those two. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone else just joining, Justin just uh, asked about your Instagram account, just some of your contact information. Oh, Why don't yeah. we do that really quick? Kind of yeah. for anyone who's just joining us on the stream, welcome, by the way, so let us know where you're joining from. Now let us know who you are, what level of design you're at, any questions for Joanne around, what did we talk about so far, Access accessibility, um, User, yeah, like users emotions during it during considering users feelings and emotions. Yeah. I feel like you're an expert in understanding yeah. a user's like feeling. Joanne does a lot of a lot of research for background. She has a lot of background in re, uh, um, user research, and mm -hmm. so she's very good mm -hmm. at that. Mm -hmm. um, tea relaxes people. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, yeah. Tea is. Great. I always have a cup of tea before I go to sleep. Mm. Distant thunder. I love that. Wow, that's ooh, because it's does thunder. Is there a plugin? Is there that a plugin that distant just plays thunder? distant thunder? That's wonderful. Um, because thunder too close would be too much, but distant thunder. Wow. Voodoo Valis's Star Wars relaxes her. Yeah. Um, oh, the soft soothing scree of Tie Fighter. Scree, scree. That's great. Um, whale sounds. Whale synth. Um. What are we about to what are we about to drop on? So everybody. Whale Synth is a wonderful device. <laughs> this is what relaxes us people. So if you're ever just so stressed out at work, have it up, have it up. Okay. Um, um, yes. So Whale Synth is something where you it just gives you these water waves. So this is exactly what maybe I was subconsciously <laughs> inspired by for yeah, this application. For your app. So your inspiration comes in the strangest forms, people. Yeah. So you can switch between whales and click on the blue, just the blueness. Oh, the blue. Well, good luck trying to get away from this website, people. We're talking whale synths. Um, and so maybe you got a little bit of inspo from this. Yeah, Alexis and I have definitely played around with this and created a sound and we try to mimic the sound. Um, go into a really echoey room and try to mimic the sound. Beautiful. 
and what a creative UI and UX experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, that's enough of whale synth for today. Maybe tomorrow we'll bring it back up. <laughs> um, oh, pets on a walk. These are all the things that relax us. Thank yeah. you for thank you for letting us know what relaxes you. Man, that distant thunder is really gonna stick with me. <laughs> that is just a really good one. Um, we're talking about this specifically around applications and the need to have a feeling mm -hmm. like relaxation yeah. around something like understanding instructions for an at-home test, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for any type of like healthcare-related um, moment. It's a very high-stress um, environment, anything around healthcare. Yeah, You're like, it's it so is. I, I can't imagine, like, even when I walk into a doctor's appointment and they're they're like, do you have your like ID? Do you also have your, your you know, your Kaiser Permanente card? And do you have um, all these additional informations of like your symptoms? Do you have them memorized? And um, <laughs> <I feel laughs> what's your like, name? What's, what's your social? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's just it's a very like um, process driven experience that I think there's a lot of opportunity to involve the emotional capacity that you would feel. Mm. Um, that added layer of, yeah, of like taking care of your body while you're going through the process of trying, trying to take, take care, care of your care body. Of your body. Yeah. Um, User experience yeah. within healthcare field. This is the topic that we're on right now for anybody yeah. who's kind of coming yeah. in and out of that whale sounds, of those whale yeah. sounds. Um, and I think, I think you're spot on. I think there is so yeah. much work to be done in this area as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I feel like you need definitely a good culture around understanding the user to be able yeah. to design well for them. In this, yeah. capacity, in this capacity, for sure. Yeah, and the best way to do that is to go out there and have conversations with people, mm. um, especially people who are completely not familiar with design, completely not familiar maybe with um, using a, a mobile application for figuring out their health needs, um, and just understanding like what is their current process, um, what, mm. do, what do you usually do when you um, want to seek help, when you just you know, have a cold. Um, mm -hmm. And listening to them talk, um, five whys is a really good method. Um, whenever you ask someone a question, like Alexis. Yes. Um, what do you usually do when you have a cold? I usually sleep. Why? Because I feel better when I sleep. Why? Because I guess maybe I work too hard during the week. Hmm, that's interesting. Why? <sighs> So many reasons. We're having our own, uh, we're having a uh, user research session right now using the five mm -hmm. whys, and I've hit my fourth why, and I'm about to really open up, and I don't know, and I don't know why. So if anybody is having trouble understanding their user, five whys. Yeah, that's Five it. whys, and you will get somewhere. Yeah. You will find a, pa a pain point. Um, what a pro. Mm -hmm. Easiest. Getting me to, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry on camera. <laughs> Yeah, I just want everyone, I just want to collect everyone's tears. Um, and then just manifest that into an application. Justin's letting us know a little bit about what's going on with him. I'm the UX designer for a benefits provider. Oh, wow, so understanding the stress mm -hmm. in an end user's life, understanding yeah. them is what I'm currently focusing on. Yeah. And more power to you, man. It is, you're doing some good work. Um, it's some tough work. It is some tough work. Uh, it's very systems related. and. Kristen says, my five-year-old nephew asks why a lot. There's a lot to I learn I think kids from are the, yeah. there's a lot to learn from yeah. kids and designing. Um, the ultimate um, curiosity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and its purest form mm -hmm. come from kids. Um, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think my favorite designers and the best designers to work with come, approach problems from a child's perspective mm -hmm. almost. Like yeah. just keep being curious about things. Yeah. Why, why, why? Yeah. Um, and you're gonna find a solution. That's hopefully gonna benefit everyone. Yeah. Awesome, it's yeah. exciting. So, when Sam Anderson just joined the chat. Well, well, well. Whale, whale, whale. Hey. <laughs> so, after, you know, user is calm and they are like, okay, I'm ready to begin. Um, going through this, like, step-by-step -step process is how I've imagined the actual testing experience to go. Um, mostly because I really like this idea of one step per screen versus having multiple steps because that can also that is what the current experience is already doing. Um, it gives you all of these multiple points of like, be aware of this, make sure you do this, make sure you're in this environment. Um, mm. 
which have proven to be successful to some people, but for most people, they really do like it being like, okay, this is the only thing I gotta do, great. Um, I can have that done. Getting it done, having the satisfaction to go to the next screen and being like, okay, this is my second screen right here. And I am so ready to just dive into what's next. You know, through mm. every step, they gain more confidence. I mean, like, okay, did the first, did the second, did the third, did the fourth. Okay, I'm so ready to go, like I'm on a roll. Um, yeah. And so that is kind of what I envisioned for the in-home experience. And for the content in here, since I am creating just a general um, in-home testing experience, I didn't really want it to be focused on um, catering it towards a specific test. Um, so I just put in like, unpack the test, what you have in front of you, mm -hmm. unpack it, um, begin with placing it, everything on a space near you. And right here, it's a placeholder for possibly an image. We can go into um, oh. our plugins right here. New plugin alert. Yeah. Bow, bow, bow. Um, and maybe we can go into our stock search and we can put in like, what is it? Unpack. Let's see what pops up there. Um, Ooh. Packages. Packages. Makes sense. Um, or we can just type in health. Yeah, like what, what comes in when I type in health? Um, and when I'm using plugins, I like to remember what search words that I'm using so mm -hmm. that it also increases the amount of flow of, of what I know it's gonna pop up. And so there's a bunch of images right here, but in my case, I think that I'm gonna choose not to go with an image. I think I'm gonna choose to create this blank because I want it to be even simpler where someone just mm. reads and then they take that, that's all the information and they just swipe on through to the next. Got it. So number two is place whatever test you have in a holder. Um, and then there's an image there for that. Um, instead of these circle images, I'm actually gonna incorporate these waves. I want them to be with you throughout the whole test. Kind of like, um, kind of like your buddy. Mm -hmm. um, they're just like, okay. If waves, I, waves as buddies. If I see these waves, then this is most likely going to be an easy thing for me to do. How are we doing in the chat? Everyone's talking about stickers over in the chat. Awesome. Still discussing those stickers and what to do with them. <laughs> so Joanna is currently going through. It's almost like an on. It's almost like an onboarding experience, but instead it's a. It's almost like um, um like a someone to help, like a help, a guide. Would you call it? What are we calling this? Yeah, it is a guide. I I imagine this to be an optional um, application for someone to download if they're um, a little overwhelmed by the current experience. Because mm. um, I think, you know, in the end of the day, not everyone has access to a phone. Maybe right. um, maybe someone um, doesn't have like the latest software even to right. like, and it keeps you from downloading application. There's a lot of like different hurdles to go through. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, maintaining that optional um, availability is really crucial to health. Um, you always need to make sure that you have the information first, and if you want to go even further, then to have those um, tailored to you. Right. It's awesome. There's so many things around. There's so many ways, so many hurdles people, mm -hmm. users will have mm -hmm. with experiencing whatever you create, you know. The ideal user having the per everything downloaded perfectly, having enough storage space even for what you're creating, having having the right system working. Like it's, you got to account for all of these different variables. Sometimes you just need to have them download a PDF. You know what I mean? You got to really think through all the pain points that could happen. Um, so I didn't like the stock ooh, images, ooh, so I was undraw. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Undraw, which nice. is another plugin. They provide you illustrations of uh, people doing different things and they're really cute. Um, and so I'm like, okay, maybe this might go really well with what I'm going for. So I'm just taking a look here. What do you guys think about these? Mm, I love Unjaw. I love that you can actually, I think you should be able to, I think you're just a great job simplifying ideas. What are you typing in? I typed in great. Great. Oh. Success. Success. 
but healthcare. I'm trying to look for an image that shows that you've completed everything. Mm. I mean, this can be something here. Ooh, there, there you go, you go. Yeah, success. success. Um, so it's just as instant you as You can even this. change the color on that if you want. You really it's, can. Yeah. Um, and so you got a little success page here. Um, and this is for the end here where if the test does require someone to wait for the test to, results to develop, mm -hmm. um, that can also be a really high point of anxiety because um, <clears throat> When you're waiting, right? When you're that waiting filled, period, that's so yeah, you're so nerve wracking. With thoughts of like, okay, what's the worst possible thing that can happen? Right. And you're going to that place, um, and so we want to give them a delightful moment where they're like, okay, it's success. I did all the things. Mm -hmm. um, I am good to go. And over here, oh, look at that. there's a tiny timer. Um, tiny timer. And I just put in like you know, OBGYN support, maybe that's what the test is about, or additional support in terms of like, maybe you don't need um, doctor support, but right. maybe community care. Maybe you need someone who just needs to talk to you. Um, I love that including, I that. love including community care into yeah. this. Um, yeah. Let's see. I love the idea of even like deciding which communities that you would like support from. Right, maybe right. Maybe even, right? Some communities aren't the same for some people. Taking yeah. Taking certain types of, um, Tests specifically yeah. around healthcare, especially. Yeah. Um, so it's great. Those are all the different sources that I wanted to uh, lead users to discover while they're waiting. So they they can take their mind off of their thoughts. Um, they can also have these uh, trustable resources that was provided um, from hopefully the company of their in-home test. Um, and it just gives you these words of like, we'll notify you once the results are ready. Um, feel free to learn more while you wait. You might be surprised at what you learn. And so it gives you a little push into... A little, little push. Yeah, a little nudge. A little nudge. Um, into the right direction or a recommended dis uh, direction. Hmm. And so this part right here, it says where we'll notify you, invites you to close the app. If anything oh, okay. you need to go somewhere else and you know, Listen to some distant thunder. I then love that. That distant is thunder. what you're. Yeah, that's what you're doing. And it almost feels like the perfect you. opportunity to kind of push into, or maybe even the opportunity for the app itself to kind of have a headspace type moment, mm -hmm. or maybe code a headspace, or maybe make your own yeah. physical headspace away from your phone. Yeah. Um, I think designing for this this moment of oh, being away mm -hmm. is super is an amazing opportunity that yeah. not a lot of um, designers account for. Definitely. You know, you you. You shouldn't be on your phone constantly. You can't be on your phone constantly. You no. are going to be away from it no. at some point. No. You, um, need, you need your friends. You need, you need your, your community support. We have um, community, just like we have community sports in the chat. Thank you, Sam, for all your kind words. Yeah, definitely. Um, that is so great. I saw there was a question earlier about any design yeah. books and resources. Do you have any that you would, uh, right off the top of your head? Mm, designing your life. Designing your life. I forget who it's by. Um, it was by a professor at Stanford who teaches a class. It's like their most like well-known classes because everybody uh, wants to know how I to design it. their lives. Yeah. I see. I see. Um, um, who's the author? Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a book that Joanne recommends for other designers. Um, I can. Yeah. And then I personally really like. Let's see. What are some other design books? Um, the Little Book of Design Research Ethics um, came out a while ago mm -hmm. um, from IDEO. It's a great one to kind of refresh your mind if we're in the topic of discussing yeah. things with people. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Let's do this. You can see. Nope, not going to do it. Anyway. Yeah, also I know um, Brotopia is mm. a good design book. Um, yeah, so some books aren't specific around design. Some of them yeah. are just about culturally yeah. design and tech. Yeah. Um, those are some great reference books, too. Um, what is the other one? There's a couple of other. Design of Everyday, design of everyday Things. It's a classic. Yeah. Um, it's a classic. If anybody in the chat has any design books or references 
um, specifically books. I love this. I talk about books. Mm. It's something you can hold. Yeah. You know, we're not talking medium articles. We're yeah. talking books. If anyone has any they'd love to share, um, please do. Um, and that's that's great. So I just wanted to like talk about books for a hot second. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also wanted to discover like. I really like games within an application, mm, mm -hmm. and I'm like, is there a way that I can also incorporate like a gamification in, inside a health and wellness app? Like, could the playfulness of games um, match, you know, the calming and the soothing attitude of a health and wellness during a critical time when one is waiting for their test to develop? Mm. Um, and so I'm like, okay, let me let me explore this thought. Um, so I come. I came up with these cards, these true and false um, questions, where we go into that place where if someone has the thought of like, okay, what if my test comes out the way that I don't want it to, um, and I have to restructure my whole life due to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it addresses that thought. It goes, so I've written, one test is the ultimate result of your health. And users are invited to test that knowledge. They're like, do you think that's true or false? Interesting. Um, and pretend they have clicked true. And that ta it takes them to the next card and it says, it's actually false. You're highly recommended to uh, encourage to go to your primary care doctor and do additional testing because it's, it's, never, it's never the final statement. It's always just the beginning of your journey to learning more about your health. That's interesting. Um, and so this is my, was my attempt at looking at what are these gaming qualities that everyone is like, mm. you know, everyone loves games. Like, what are those components I like that I can put into uh, this application? What's going to help the users learn yeah. more? Yeah. Um, you know, it's if you just a bunch of screens with more, which is words on them, mm -hmm. it's this almost the same thing, essentially what they started yeah. with, yeah. right? This very complicated manual of sorts. Um, mm -hmm. Adding in a couple of like fun interactive elements is only going to help people learn more and understand what they're doing better. Definitely. So game, gamifying some things is a great idea. Definitely. And one actual, what second tool and one second tip on accessibility is text. Um, so when you're in these gray wireframes, um, there's always, you know, these backgrounds are really helpful to have to um, identify the space of like one component versus another. Um, and so you always want to make sure your text um, boldness as well as if you're going to add color is really contrasting from your background. And um, so in this case, since it is a grade scale, I kept my text um, dark black and then I, create, I made the background um, a lighter gray color. And so this is in the case that um, it really helps if you squint your eyes and you look at the screen and you go, okay, can I see everything? Even though I can't uh, read it, I know like where my eye gravitates towards. Interesting. Um, and that's a really great way to just building this structure of, okay, um, if, if a user were to look at the screen for three seconds, what are they gonna look at first? What are they gonna see? What's, and, what's the call out? Yeah. What's and, the call to action here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you are successful if the user reads the thing that you are intended um, for them to read. What's the other benefit of doing um, with sketching to wireframes, you know, mm -hmm. and staying in this mode for as long as you can mm -hmm. while you flesh out an idea? Mm -hmm. too, too quickly do we see designers go into yeah. high fidelity mode. Yeah. Um, Without testing, without understanding, even like if they need that that call to action, if they need that screen, yeah, right. It's um, you want to and and doing little tests like that. Like I love that that trick. Like it's kind of like looking away or looking at it really fast, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. seeing like what do I see first and did mm -hmm. I get this right? Um, yeah, very helpful. Yeah, and sometimes what I do actually is I print these gray wireframes out, wow. and I take them out of the you know I take them out of my computer screen. I print them the same size that it would be in my phone, mm. and I would pin them to a wall. Of them all to a wall, mm. and I would just invite my friends or whoever is walking by to look at it, um, uh. and go, "Hey, like, what do you think about this flow? Like, the, there's these waves going on. Um, there's different visual looks. You know, this onboarding process right here of the one, two, three, four, five steps look different from the preparation aspects. Um, how does that?" How does that resonate with you? What what sense are you making that in your head? Um, and that's a great way to just like take out some sticky notes and have people comment on what they think this experience is for them. Mm. Um, and so that's a great way of quick user testing that I highly recommend. I Always that. very effective. I love that. Yeah. 
Um, so these wireframes came a really long way. I actually wanna show you guys, um, this was actually um, a finished project that I had done and I actually oh. went ahead and put in color, but I extracted the colors from them so I can walk you guys through um, what it was to go from sketches to grayscale to, to full color. But I also wanted to show you guys what I had first came up with ever. Um, and it was these screens. So mm. this has colors, right? Um, and I showed them to I showed them to a bunch of people and they were like, they looked at me like, Joanne, um, is this supposed to resonate calming and soothingness? <laughs> um, and um. I was like, yeah. And they're like, it just seems like a really long like DMV form or something. And I was like, you're totally right. Like, um, there was just this, there was no conversation happening. Right. There was no description of like, you're invited to do this. It was kind of like, this is your information. Place your order and like go back to the home page. The opposite of calming. It was really. the opposite or of it. easy. It was the opposite of it. And it, this was because I was so wrapped up in, um, I got to make sure all the information is there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, wait, but there's this whole other level and this whole other information that you can tap into as a UX designer of providing this um, sense of communication um, within your application. So that was initially where I started off with and I did the whole sticky note and putting it on the wall thing and that's uh, that's how I got from there, from here to there. Um, so, user testing. Yeah, so user testing, that's a really big point. Howard says DMV does not equal calming, correct? Yeah, so you will never... Um, if you want to sh make an app that stresses someone out, yeah, just add a lot of words, yeah. make it look like a DMV form. Yep, a lot of words. Um, I wish I could make apps like smell. Ooh, like, someday. I, I, I just like to think of it as like, what if you entered into an app and it emitted this aroma, you know? Because... When Using it, all the yeah. senses for for a user's experience, yeah, I think I, is definitely going to be the future. Yeah. So get on that XD team. Some smell plugin. Hear that, Sam? Some smell plugins. Speaking of Sam, we have about 22 minutes until we're doing some design feedback um, based on today's challenge. It um, happens to be a, a gardening calendar. So I'm excited to look at that, and that's perfect because that. we love food. Yeah. And outside, yeah. And food has smell. Food has smell. Food gardening is calming. All of these things. All mm -hmm. of these. We're really mm -hmm. full circle here. Full circle. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull back this style guide that I had, and we're gonna actually go in, put in some color, um, and show you guys the process of like what what it might look like or how I personally like to go about in building color with an application. Mm. So I have these four different colors of um, this color being the darkest, I have the hex code for it, and what is my lightest color. Usually I like to reserve the darkest colors for text. Um, I always like dark text with a, with a light background in the back because um, it creates the most contrast. Um, for muted colors, I like to use that for um, things like in this in this text right here, where mm. it says your information is always confidential. Um, since it's not a call to action um, like button, it's good to have it muted so that you're not gravitated it's towards to click thing. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I like to do is I like to just go in and um, play around with the overall background color. I like to go big and then go really small, narrow. Um, and I learned that through drawing. I was like, whenever you're gonna draw something, draw the whole landscape and then go into the details. Interesting. Um, and so what I do is I just go for, okay, do I wanna create a background color for this? And for me, I was like, yes, I love color. And I think that there's so much um, story that narrates within it that can very much be unpacked in this application. Love it. And keep in mind, guys, it still needs a name, so. Right. Any chat, point. chat. All right, we have some things we need to talk about. We need a name for this app, and what else? Did you need anything else? Let's just talk about names first. So we're talking about yeah. an app that. What are our main goals? Um, create a calming experience of a walkthrough for a health and wellness um, product. Maybe like a at-home test kit. And these are the simple instructions. So think of think around those. These are our, your keywords are health, wellness, mm -hmm. calm. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, yeah. calming. Um, so we need a name. So we're going over name. We need some name suggestions. Yeah. We'll probably pick one tomorrow. Yeah, it's um, it's process heavy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this application it's like goes steps. through. Yeah. So what it's does that have to do? Completing steps. Um, um, steps for your health. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, yeah, and so I have a tagline here. It says, knowing your health status is your empowerment. Oh. It always is. Um, and so never, yeah. never be afraid to know what your health status is because that is only empowering you. So We're taking the fear the out here. of health knowledge. Mm -hmm. You can feel empowered too. Yes. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Helping hand. Thank you, Ludovell, for that suggestion. That's a. I can see that as an app for sure. Oh, that's really dark. Hmm. So, if you so, just see, I just like to play oh, around yeah. with like, what is looking, what is going on here, and like, how can I make sure that it is on the direction toward the toward those words that we were talking mm. about. Um, and you know, is it, is it this? Is it not? Is it actually just like Ooh. you know this fill, Kinda but like, like a lesser you know opacity on it, so it kind of emits a white, but it still has that undertone of the aqua colors that we're going for. Um, and these waves have they're like multiple different waves, so maybe the wave back wave is a darker color toward than the other ones. So we go for that, and we kind of create it to be a little multi-dimensional. Group them. Make that lighter. We're making those waves. We're making those Whale, waves. Whale synth, remember, is our um, science spell here. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Do, what do you think, what, what do you call a good design? What do you think a good design needs, primarily? Mm, I think a good design needs the room to grow. Um, love always. That I love it. It always needs to know that it's in work in progress. And also, good design needs to emit a conversation. Mm. Design is always just a touch point in an area where you are opening up a conversation. So if someone looks at your design and like, oh, I, I think that this is something interesting I want to share with other people mm. and have their thoughts. Um, good or bad thoughts, whether they agree or disagree, um, if it is something that people are talking about, I think that is considered very successful. So good design as a is a entry point conversation. Good design is what else did you say? Uh, good design is it's, just, um, it's it's a starting point. Yeah, it always has room to grow. I kind of I think that was my yeah. I always agree. Agree. always is a work in progress. As is my life. As is all of our lives. Yeah. We are all just working. Um, Suraji, I don't know if I can pronounce this word. Um, fitayu. Ayu mean, meaning beautiful in Japanese, so basically it means fit and beautiful. Fitayu. That's the one, that's, real, that's a really beautiful, beautiful name yeah. suggestion. That's just a beautiful word. Hmm. What about you, Alexis? Hmm. What, what do you consider is good design? Hmm. I think good design should be something that is for Everyone. I think good design is known by everybody. Yeah. I think it's an undisputable thing. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think it's an entry point to a conversation mm -hmm. more than anything else. Yeah. Um, good design, you can't, you know, everyone says good design you can't see, which mm -hmm. is true. That's mm -hmm. great. You know, the more it kind of comes into your life and see, is seamless, the better design something maybe is. But, um, wow. yeah. But I also kind of love the idea of design kind of taking you out of your everyday and almost like stopping you in track and tracks yeah. and making you think differently. So, uh, science a lot of things. <laughs> it's a very loaded word. Um, and I think your answers are great. Howard Pinsky loves life as a work in progress. It's true. Yeah. Designing, life, your health. They're all interconnected. Everything is a work um, in progress. So if you yourself are in a good mind state, then your designs will have that room to to breathe. Um, and that's why I like to come up with that list earlier mm. when I was introducing myself, just like, okay, how do I ground myself back into um, 
who am I as a designer versus like amidst all this noise of um, people being like, I'm this kind of designer, I'm this, which is awesome, but always need to refresh, like who am I personally? That's great. Why, why are you a designer, Joanne? Why did you pick designing? For various reasons. I, I, I think I really wanted to be in the front lines of solving problems. Um, to say it in, in, in the least, the, in, the most basics, in the most basic way, um, I wanted to be able to understand why um, a cup has a handle. Mm. And I wanted to understand why I like staying in random people's houses because of Airbnb. And I wanted to understand, like, why do I like to, like, order pizza on, um, what is it? Is it Domino's or mm -hmm. where they have that process? Pizza Hut, maybe? Pizza? I don't know. Oh. I think it's Domino's where they show the person making the pizza. It's like an animation. And I just love watching it. So you're fascinated by the behaviors yes. around these things. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what gets me to do that versus another? Mm. So that's how I got into it. Also, mm -hmm. design is just weird. I, I right. Think it's so weird. Right. We so get caught explorative. up in design being serious. Mm -mm. Design is kind of weird. And that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Mm -hmm. We want mm -hmm. it to be kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of things are looking very similar nowadays, design practice wise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think there's it does it a trends. disservice to design as a whole. Yeah, there's definitely trends. Um, if you guys notice here in the background, I like to, I'm kind of playing around with these waves aspect of like, I don't want them to be all in the same place going from screen to screen. Like what if they kind of just floated around? Like what waves do? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just play with that uh, Maybe in the future they actually do move. Maybe they do move. Maybe they can animate to move. Ooh, maybe prototyping some movement back there, that'd be Ooh. great. Yeah. Um, also a great way to boost uh, your visuals within an application is to play around with text color. Hmm. Sometimes I, even if it doesn't emit a color, like if we go press on blue and we go kind of towards really dark where it looks black, um, it still is not and it c creates this really cohesive um, feeling within your application because even if you don't see it with your naked eye that it's blue, um, the way that it adapts onto your screen um, is a lot more fitting and less dark than black. I love that. Yeah. We're tricking the eye. This, op this color tricking theory's been around the forever, eye. right? Yeah. Um, I took a color class once and it was... Just a class on color? Yeah, it was unbelievable. The amount of energy that it takes to provide meaning, meaning to a color is amazing. It is amazing. Color combinations, oh my goodness. Mixing colors. Um, I remember taking a painting class and having to mix colors. Mixing colors. And taking all night to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, fun fact, a lot of your web um, devices and websites are not fully black. Like mm. even your black text, if you um, hover over it and look for the color, which there is a plugin for that, um, it's not black. It's almost close to back, but it's not because it is, um, it's too contrasty and it's too um, it's stark for it to appear as black onto your website on your on the web page. That almost frequently it is not. So I remember I talked about how I wanted to change these options mm -hmm. from like this checkoff list because it's a little too far for your thumb to reach on your phone um, into probably something more a little more approachable. Like maybe we did the whole pill thing. Pill situation. Oh, okay. Or yeah, what do you guys think? I'm open to your decisions and open to. Whatever. Do we like yeah? Do we like the radius? The is it like, what's called the radius, right? Those buttons. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Or this kind of like pill option. These are the questions. These are the hard. This is the nitty gritty of design. This is where it gets a little like. This is where the um, the uh, perfectionist side of any designer will come out. Um, that's great. Speaking of designers, speaking of all of us being designers, we have 10 minutes for you guys to submit um, the creative challenge for today, given to us by the wonderful, spectacular, can't get enough of, Sam Anderson. Um, so I can't wait to see those. I can't wait to look at a couple. And if, maybe we'll look at a couple from yesterday as well, just in case. 
And then tomorrow actually is portfolio review. So stick around, make sure to come in back to the chat tomorrow. So me and Joanne can check out your portfolios and give you all the feedback. Um, we are familiar with, with portfolio creation and design. Yeah. Yeah. As we all are. Wow, that is just pill central here. Yeah, it really the... is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a bottle of pills. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> what if we made this next thing? Got rid of that pill, right? And just created um, a circle here. And there was a fun arrow. Yeah. Howard said, design has made entering a complete stranger's car very normal. Yeah. Like, what a behavior we, we now do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, that's normal. And we go, is this where Joanne is? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. Is the air conditioner okay? It's like, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Like, totally. Um, actually, I don't want to Samantha that. is oh, back, is in the chat. It. For anyone, anyone just joining us, Joanne is actually creating a healthcare um, app designed to help us get through a at-home testing procedure with ease. Um, so right now she is going through um, kind of adding a couple of her styles, applying some styles onto some of these wireframes. Um, but do you want to kind of go through it a little bit right before we get into yeah. um, design, the design feedback? Yeah. Go through the whole. Yeah, thing. just kind of give us a little Let's overview. Do that. Let's do that. Cool. So uh, we started with coming up with these onboarding processes, um, thinking about ways how can we create an optional informational form. So um, going up with the landing page of like, okay, this is the app name, tagline, let's begin. Um, and we wanted to make it really optional for users to um, have the option to put in their information, um, which is where do they where are they located and who is their health insurance provider. Um, but the reason why it is optional is because we want to make sure that we're aware of everyone's privacy um, and their comfort comfortability. Um, and so there's the option to always skip and come back to it whenever you want, or if not, just uh, go on through and do what is the main purpose of your application. And so here is the materials checklist, which is the first beginning uh, stages of beginning your test. So do you have all your materials? Do you have um, test tube, if that's what it is? Do you have the test stick and a disposable bag? Um, and looking at all the different ways that you can put one call to action on, on each screen so that everyone is um, not overwhelmed when they're going through the application um, and that it, the segmentation is a great way to build this confidence of going on to the next screen and the next process. So first is the materials checklist and then secondly is also your body preparation. It's your own checklist for your mental health mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. mental state. Um, are you made sure that you're relaxed? Do you think, do you need a break? Do you want to come back? Um, which is why there is a screen here um, intended for you to reflect on like, okay, how am I actually feeling? Do I want to come back? Um, and if not, you just press begin and you move on forward. Um, so these are the step-by-step -step instructions of how to embark um, your home in-home tests. And I kept it very general so that um, it pertains to a lot of different in-home tests that may have um, a similar process. And so some tests require you to um, put in whatever you need to and then have this time to wait for your results to um, appear. And for that, I've pinpointed that as also like a, a high point of anxiety that users go through um, when they are all done and they're like done doing their actions they're like okay all I have to do is wait um, and so after this delightful success screen um, it takes you to a timer aspect and I've wanted to create this as an opportunity to invite um, a learning experience that is um, relevant to the anxiety that a user might be feeling. Um, so it says, feel free to learn more while you wait, and it provides these two call to actions of um, support for women or just general community care. Um, and so these um, little bits of like, how can we gamify these helpful tips um, for people to know, make that interactive. Um, that was one way that I've explored like 
you know, a false truth or, or a false statement, which is one test is the ultimate result of your health and users are invited to, to test their knowledge. Like, do I think it's true or false? Um, and in a state of high anxiety, you might think that it's true. So if you click true, it says, no, it's false. Like, um, just a little, rely, having a little yeah. game pop up as well. Yeah, rely kind on of. this application, like be sure that it's not, it's just the beginning. Um, and so that is what that application or that part of the process is. And once your results are ready, um, there is a couple, there, the conversation still, still goes. So um, the really big focus of this application mm. was not only visuals, but also copywriting. Mm, um, mm -hmm. What is the conversation that you wanna have back and forth with your users? And that was a lot of the um, mind power that went into creating this application. So this one says, no matter the result, additional testing is advised with a healthcare provider. The result of this test is not definitive of your, con of your condition. Interesting. Um, secondly, it says, please take as much time as you need to process this. Many people live long lives with early detection and care. Maybe if it is that crucial um, part of the test and you and you don't have these thoughts, then um, hearing these words and reading these words yeah. immediately um, hopes to lessen the anxiety and provide that part where like there is help and care for you. Really important stuff around um, how do you have the conversation with the user around something that's not mm -hmm. so fun, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes apps and sometimes mm -hmm. the need for them or any type of product, digital yeah. product, isn't always gonna be a yeah. fun thing. It all can't yeah. be, you know, a fun app that yeah. um, plays funny noises or whatnot. These candy Crush, yeah. Candy Crush. No, this, these are ones that people are need, need to, need help yeah. getting through their, their a very hard time in their life with. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting. Yeah. It's a really great exercise around mm -hmm. having a conversation mm -hmm. with the user, having hard conversations with the user as a UX designer. You know, how does that, how does that look? How does that feel? And I think Joanne's doing a great job with her, with her apps, um, not just copywriting, but also look and feel. And then tomorrow we'll get more, even more into that. Yeah, definitely. So I can't even wait for that. I'm, I'm really, st really excited yeah. about it. Um, Marcella has a quick question before we jump into the design yeah. feedback. Yeah. Uh, when you use illustrations from Undraw, do you use them and attribute the plugin? Oh, or do you have to pay for those if you're designing a legit app? It's a great question around plugin use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you just use do you just use them and attribute the plugin? Um, hmm. So I think that really depends on how. Um, scalable you want your application to be. So in this case where um, for me, I wanted to create it in the sense that this is just, um, I want to make it into a high fidelity mm -hmm. wireframe that works. Um, I used Undraw as a way of like, this is the look and feel of a placeholder, um, either image or vector. Right, um, yeah. Pulled from Undraw. And if it were to have gone forward to actually being launched, maybe you would use there, something different. Maybe you would yeah, take the time yeah, and like. I, I would definitely credit Undraw. Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, and maybe, or maybe you have like an in-house illustrator or yeah. maybe a part of illustration. Illustrating is gonna be specific to this brand. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Howard let us know, you know, Undraw is completely free, which is mm -hmm. great. So mm -hmm. for all of, for all of us designers who don't have the illustration background yeah. um, or have the chops to just like bust out some really cool ones. Yeah. Undraw is a great resource and it is free to use. So yeah. keep using those. Thank you, Howard, for that. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting, all these different, all these different plugins. So why don't we go over what we just used today? Yeah, okay. So we used, first one we used was Mimic. So mm, Mimic, Mimic was, was a great we, one. Yeah, on just the, the competitive landscape of like, okay, I really like this application and this website. So I went into my web browser and I looked up um, right over here, uh, My Possible Self, their really successful mental wellness application. Copied their URL, went back into XD, um, clicked on Mimic, and dropped in that URL, clicked Extract, waited a couple seconds. So Mimic is actually pulling the style, like the style 
almost yeah. a very close representation yeah. of the style guide for yeah. this brand, yep. which is really cool. I mean, that's, I haven't even seen that plugin. That's awesome. Yep, and so you get all these different illustrations that they were working with and, and colors as well. And I just did that for all of the different um, applications that I was looking at. And I was like, okay, what's their similarities and gathered that. Um, then I went into the UI faces, um, figuring out ways to quickly uh, draw out user personas, and this plugin really helps you to just source that image without mm -hmm. having to leave your, um, yep, having to leave your application, yeah. and so going through that. That's awesome. Uh, so use the icons um, plugin the right icons, here, yeah. where you can just go into your icons and search what you need, or just go around there and click. Um, and you can just go ahead and do that. Awesome. Yeah. Those are great. And we're going to hear more about plugins. We're going to have a plugin party. We're going to keep plugging away at them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tomorrow. So yeah. definitely, we'll, we're going to jump right back in with Joanne right after we look at some of these um, awesome designs that you guys have submitted. So we're still waiting on some for today's design challenge. I think it's uh, creative challenge number. Ooh, ooh. Um, I think it would be number seven. This calendar is today's. Um, if we can't, then maybe we hop over to yesterday's and talk about the scanning bar barcodes creative challenge, which I think I saw a lot more of in the chat. Mm. Um, right, so designing experience scans uh, recyclable goods. Recyclable Semi goods. Semi-familiar with the, with the concept. So we're yeah. gonna, let's just jump into some of those while maybe some of you are uploading today's challenge. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll see them tomorrow. So let's check some out. Okay. All righty. So, let me go any bigger. Okay. So it looks like we have a coffee cup here. Let's, okay. So we're analyzing a photo using kind of this overlay. Oh, Ooh. quick animation just happened. And share with your friends. Oh, look at that. Joanne, what are your thoughts on this app? This app uses very nice colors. Um, yeah. I can't really read the text. I um, I think that the mm -hmm. use of imagery is really powerful here. Um, you went right to the subject and we're like, okay, we're gonna talk about we're talk about coffee and keeping that also in the uh, the screen when you pull up the additional information. Mm -hmm. um, that's also really useful for uh, the user to reference. Um, I think the text hierarchy is really powerful here. Um, going, you're not Coffee. afraid. Uh, yeah, you're not afraid of that big text. Um, definitely. Um, was this made in XD? This is all XD. Oh, yeah, all this XD? is the XD Creative Challenge. Yeah, I believe XD has um, spell check, and mm. that is really helpful to use. Um, yep. Anytime yep. that you are um, in a rush or just like not really thinking about um, spelling, then it's just helpful to to use that. Yeah, just one of those things to remember. I think they do a yeah. great job with this call out down at the bottom. We're yeah. talking about kind of like squinting Should your eyes happen. and what's the yeah. most important thing. Definitely. So maybe this is an app that scans a, a coffee, scans some yeah. type of food, and maybe sends it over to mm -hmm. a friend. Maybe it's about dieting. Maybe we're talking about healthcare. Mm. Yeah. Great. Awesome, cool. Thank you for that submission. Very lovely. Very lovely. All right, let me get any bigger. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so this is, again, yesterday, so it's, again, the scanning the scanning app, mm. the bar, scanning the barcode app, and okay. then figuring out where it goes to recycle. Um, we're using auto-animate. Okay. So here we go. I love the case study yeah. itself. This is now living on your behalf, so that's great. Yeah. So now you just have a project up there. Definitely. It's great for beginners to kind of partake in these. Um, we're mapping out the flow. Looks like share, start, scan, camera, share. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, laying it Breaking out, you know. Up, sketching yeah. also can be words, with words. You can sketch out your ideas with, yeah. in your ideas with words. All right, designs. Okay. I wonder if, okay. So we're scanning a package here, mm -hmm. or are we composting? Interesting, okay. And then once it's done, I guess because compost doesn't have a mm -hmm. label. No, um, yeah. compost is not a label. Um, right. Take a photo. Sort as hard plastic. Look at that. That's great. Ooh. Is that a description or is it a is it a button? Sort as hard energy saved. Okay. I'm reading it as a as a description. Mm. 
Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a description. Great, and I love that um, that white background behind the text, so mm -hmm. that it you mm -hmm. can clearly read it from the image and does not create any um, comprehensibility issues. Um, also, going back to that scanning screen, um, it's a great use of uh, dark overlay and playing with opacity, um, just so that you have, it's still a camera effect, but it's narrowing in on where you should put your perspective and place that scan bar. Um, I think that's a really great use of, of scanning. Yeah. And then there's a social we'll aspect to it. Share everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe your story, maybe yeah. on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. That's great. So just knowledge mm -hmm. disbursement mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. like maybe this thing yeah. a lot of your friends you've seen throw away. Yeah. You're gonna share it on Facebook and be like, yeah. you guys, this is this is what this is composed of. Let's Definitely. not do that. Definitely. I can also almost see that automated. Like mm. um, if you are scanning multiple items at a time, like maybe over a period of time, uh, maybe those that check that checkbox turns into a toggle. Mm -hmm. So that you just turn on like, oh, I want all of my scans to be shared on my Instagram story. And it just happens automatically. So there's an affordance of that. Love it. I think generally your your visual design though is just very clear, mm -hmm. very well understood. We love like, the peeled banana. We love the peeled banana icon. Yeah. It's great. Awesome. And on top of that, great case study format mm -hmm. and layout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, very helpful mm -hmm. for us to understand and anyone else understanding yeah. if they don't, aren't familiar with the Most creative definitely. challenges. Um, all right, awesome. Let's keep going with these. Okay, I think we have an actual like animation here. Let's try it out. Oh. Gorgeous. Looks like you have a sailboat. That's great. Mm, three different locations. You know, I'm a really big fan of um, when you have large amounts of data. Like, I, I imagine this person was like, there's a bunch of places um, that you can go to for a donation center. Mm -hmm. um, but this person specifically chose three and gave only those limited options, mm -hmm. um, which increases mm -hmm. the chances of a user actually carrying out this action. Right, right. It's all about um, condensing the information you give the users so they can make a mm -hmm. well-informed decision. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this looks like it's a donation. I remember watching a little bit of Sam's stream mm -hmm. yesterday. This is mm -hmm. all about like, mm -hmm. maybe you're gonna donate something. Yeah. yeah. And so in this case, it's a sailboat. Yeah. Um, and this is great. It's almost like a, a community resource gathering yeah. type tool. It's, it, I think the information hierarchy is very powerful here. Um, I love the conversation, the, the copyright. It says like, looks like you have a sailboat. It's kind of like, it's very, it's very fun. It's yeah. like, this is what I see. Yeah, um, providing yeah it that looks personality. Like, not just it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome, and that, that transition was pretty great. Let's try to look, let's look at it one more time. If we can. Mm. Mm. One more time, here we go. Okay. I'm convinced. That loading, that loading. That loading was great. Was also fun. That is fun. It kind of sways back and forth like water. I don't know if that was intentional, but. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Jonathan's asking about the chat, if these challenges are daily. These challenges are daily. Mm -hmm. And actually, let's just pop on over. Coming, coming into Behance, doing a daily creative challenge specifically with XD gets it reviewed right here on the stream and submitting in our discourse. Actually, once you go down to chat with community, it takes mm -hmm. you straight to the Discord um, chat and that's where you can submit and that's where I'm pulling from directly. Um, and there's some really great challenges and if you go back even further, I've told so mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. um, new designers about this um, just so it's something for you to Keep practicing. Just yeah. get, get your get your design wheels moving on yeah. something, um, and you're not alone. There's always someone explaining it to you. Yeah, so. I feel like designing is this muscle that you always need to be like constantly using mm -hmm. um, to just keep it up to par. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay. This is one again from yesterday. Okay. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, this is all of them. Okay, let's just go down to. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, this person has every all their daily challenges up. That's very cool. We're yeah. gonna take a second to see if there was another one up before we jump into yours. <laughs> like, is this a new one? Oh, yes, I think this is one from yesterday, another scanning. <gasps> Ooh. So we're adding a photo of something. Love okay. the curved Editing. edges. 
All right, so maybe we're giving up a, it's a, like a baby, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby yeah. item share tool because those things grow, yeah, those items get grown out almost yeah. immediately, yeah. right? So maybe this pink bicycle is somebody's, they want to give it away or they want to sell it really cheap. What's its story? Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love the copy. Yeah. That's so great. Oh, that, I remember those yeah. wide open, those wide open eyes full of delight. All right, so we are going to cry today. <laughs> so I want that bike. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to buy this bike. Um, let's see. And then what's next? Okay, so that looks like it's that's kind of like the, the summation of what you got here. Um, that was great. Yeah. So we're giving away an item. Here we go. Do we have any design critiques for this person? Mm. Maybe starting with the screen. Yeah. I am curious about this title, Happy Baby. It's, it's really fun to say, um, and which is always like a really big win for a title. Um, and also the little icon of like the elephant emitting hearts yeah. of its trunk. But I, I'm really interested in these visuals as to like, and like the why, the why part behind of it. Yeah, um, yeah. A very, um, these these colors, speaking of colors, you know, yeah. we have this very yeah. kind of like teal, mm -hmm. like could be a gender neutral color as yeah. well for, for babies. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. I like, I, the cloud I like the cloud <laughs> button. I like the cloud button too. Yeah, Those are fun. Uh, okay, and so we're adding a photo, so we're not taking a photo. Mm. Oh, item name. That's great. Putting in the item. Yeah. Putting in the story. Oh my goodness. Putting yeah. In the story. Yeah. Um, yeah, chat box, I mean, uh, description boxes are really fascinating to me because how much space you give them initially. Mm. Um, is gonna depend, yeah. is gonna get, you're gonna get a certain amount of text yeah. based on that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Twitter, for example, a very short box. And so people provide really brief descriptions versus yeah. in this application, it's it's larger. So people are more compelled to spend time on it. Right, so it's more of a story versus yeah. questions around maybe like, when's the first time you use this bike? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. expecting maybe just like a short mm -hmm, couple mm -hmm. words. Yeah. This kind of box uh, affords yeah. for a longer story. Yeah, also great use of color and also adding the text in it too, mm -hmm. so that you know what you're gonna do. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That is great. Okay, I'll check one more time just so we know. Remember guys, we are at the Adobe Creative Challenge section yeah. of the stream. Just make sure to make your way over to Behance. Um, all the way down is where you can share and chat with our community. And don't feel feel free to go back. Go back a couple days. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Sam's Sam's um, creative challenges week are all around sustainability and how we can make yeah. this world a little more green because we sure do need that. Um, let's see. Okay, let's double check. Okay. All right, so why don't we swing on over to Joanne's and kind of have you yeah. wrap up and All talk right. a little bit about maybe what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So one way that I like to just always showcase my work in progress is like, I want to share it with my Behance community. So mm. this is one last plugin. Um, downloaded Behance and I just clicked on the artboard that I want to showcase. So um, I want to click this one and I want to share it. Just Speaking click Behance. Speaking of work in progress. Mm -hmm. I just click Behance and it takes me to, do you want to post this? And it's asking me, do I want to post it in like the story section of my Behance profile? And I click, yeah, I want to post. And it just wait a couple bits while it uploads and it does all the work for me. Interesting. Um, and I view on Behance and it pops up the page. Mm, there you go. Right here. And it shows like how many views I'm gonna get and also like um, what what I have to show for which is happening. So I also at uploaded this, the app name, because that is still something that we're gonna figure out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And everyone's had some really great yeah. input in the chat actually Amazing. while we were doing the creative Amazing. challenge. Yeah. So we'll make sure to look back over there. Yeah, and so this is a really yeah, this is a really great way to keep in touch with all your followers on Behance. Mm. Um, it's always a, it's a way to always update them, like, oh, this is what I'm working on. Like, even though I don't have a finished project, I still can offer you, like, you know, this invitation towards, like, let's have this conversation. Because design is a conversation, right? Design is a conversation. So if you click on views, people can react in other ways, and it's all the good stuff. Nice. Using... Using their stories for good. Yeah. Using stories for feedback. Yeah. It's a really, really cool option. And that's just yeah. through the Behance plugin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As easy. easy as that. As easy as that. So tomorrow we're gonna actually work on incorporating more of these colors. Um, also working with like different types of um, 
call to actions also, like we've been working on different buttons, seeing mm -hmm. how that works and feels, um, and going through, parsing through like, okay, what does the results part look and how does that feel different from the actual going through the onboarding process. And so that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. And there'll be more plugins for us to use tomorrow. Well, and I also want to invite you guys, if you guys find more plugins, mm -hmm. then um, it's just be like, hey, use this. Like randomly, I found one yeah, show me. here. If you just click on some type of object right here and you click on confetti. Oh my gosh. You were given confetti. Um, wow. <laughs> and you can just be like everywhere. Just have it everywhere. This is really awesome to, you know, like maybe you want to run it even more and just keep on doing that. Um, great for gaming purposes. You can also like lower their opacity so that they can maybe work as a background. Just like, you know, maybe you don't want everything to look perfect. Maybe you just want just, yeah, just confetti in the back. Remember confetti yeah. was a big, big trend like confetti, a couple years back ago. Yeah, like, it really was. I mean, it can I always I kind of love back. that though. I kind of like love it as an emoji. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Voodoo Val says, wait, you know? what? <laughs> Confetti plug-in. That's what we're on right now. We're just playing with that plug-in. Yep. Um, there's that. Also, like... Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's a great... That's great. Yeah. 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 It, you know, when, when you're coming up with a presentation, like, I, I use, like to use XD for just presenting. Um, mm, yeah, um, maybe maybe we can show that, the yeah. fact that like, your presentation was made in XD. Yeah. Not so, just these apps. Yep. Like, you your actual that? presentation and itself. It looks exactly like a slide. Um, you could prototype with the next D, so you can just, you know, insert that prototype in there, click around, and it's that seamless experience. You know, there you go. So that's how that's how you can also use um, XDS slides, which is cool. I think it's a really fun hack. I think so too. Yeah. It's all in all in one. Yeah. Going yeah. Going from slides to actual prototyping. Definitely. It's easy. Definitely. Um, so let's see. We went through mimic. Mm -hmm. Which took mimic. style guides from yeah. um, any website you plug yeah. into there, which is amazing. I think anyway. someone in the chat also mentioned Stark. Stark. Maybe we'll yeah. look at Stark. Really, maybe we can look at that really briefly. Yeah. yeah. So Stark, like, it's a plugin that helps you simulate what your um, application looks like for someone who, for example, might be colorblind. So you click on your artboard, and you can click within here all your multiple artboards in here. Um, and you can select the colorblind type that you want to uh, mm. test. And so um, let's see this first option here. And it shows oh, you what your app looks so, like mm -hmm. uh, for someone. Oh, it's that's a pro, a pro. pro version. Um, yeah, just as someone who. So that green so worked green. really well for that type of colorblind, but maybe. Yeah, but this green up. comes out as red for here, which, you know, can emit. Maybe it's a the different response. Is it soothing? So <laughs> mm -hmm. that's something to keep in mind. And that's something yes, that but oh. we should note that me just looking at your design right now, you mm -hmm. know, we can see that call to action very well. Right. You know, that is right. it's a different tone. It's, it's, a, it's in there. the background. Yeah. Um, and so we know that this design, at least for this person who is colorblind, is successful yeah. in getting them to the next screen and reading yeah. the text, which is right. huge. Definitely. Huge. Um, so that is just a really great way to just go right in there and be like, oh, how can. Stark really helped me um, yeah. before you get too deep into your design process. Um, that and also just like, I really just like to look at what are the different like color palettes that I can also look at, even mm. if I'm like um, invested into one right here, I'd be like, oh, what are other, what are other things? Um, so looking into like instant color and it gives me all these different instant like color, accent. new plugin. Yeah. What does this one do? It gives exactly? me different accent colors, like and then it gives me Ooh. all these different color combinations. Was that a color um, that you input directly? No, I just I just went into here and typed an instant color and I guess the whole idea of it is that it's instant. But I'm gonna click out of this artboard so that I do that. So I yeah. clicked so on um, we got flutter mimic, accent we colors. Had Confetti, we tried Stark, mm -hmm. we tried Undraw, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thankfully, and we found out Undraw is free for users. Yeah. Um, and this yeah. color, instant yeah. color, just pulling out these yeah. different color tones and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, also, I actually want to show you guys, um, if it is your first time wireframing and 
may, it may not come to you to instantly know um, what type of like UI elements to use. Like, oh, I don't, I don't really know how to create like a, a placeholder for an icon. Um, there's also this really helpful plugin right here where it says Ready Mobile mm. Component, and it gives you all these different um, components. Like, oh, I want to put a button, um, and you basically just click on button right here, and it should show up right here, and it gives you a button. Oh, look at that. Yep. And this is a great way for you to be like, okay, that that is how people are approaching that and um, just help you get the ball rolling. Um, obviously, this can evolve to a way that is different. Like this is a sidebar, so it could be like a hamburger menu that pops out and yeah. gives you that option, that layout. So there are a lot of different ways to, where like plugins Start can help you. Start moving with plugins. Yeah. And just move your design process along faster. Yeah. That's kind of the effort, the what, mm -hmm. we're, what plugins are trying to do here. Yes, yes. Image cards, very useful. That's um, awesome. In this case, I don't really want the button there, and so you can always go in there, and I always like the option to, to iterate, so this is what, a, this is a good plugin to invite iterations. Right, and can we go over to your your sketches really quick? Because we yeah. kind of, you know, this was a big part of our discussion was, was transferring these sketches over, and even just this simple template that Joanne uses, mm -hmm. um, she printed out, I think this is a great, like, a great way to get started, mm -hmm. um, wireframing. Um, yeah. For anybody who's new, who's afraid of drawing, yeah. and thinking they need to have their wireframes look perfect. They don't need to look perfect. You don't need to spend no. hours drawing a box, drawing a phone. No. Like, no. We want to get into the nitty gritty around what these different um, boxes, or what these different phone screens will mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's awesome. That was great, Joanne. I'm really excited for tomorrow. Um, thanks so much for joining us, you guys. We uh, had a lot of fun today. We were going over through um, Joanne's app, which had to do with healthcare, and we used a bunch of plugins, and we're going to use even more tomorrow. Um, and I'm really excited. We even got a wave going at one point. Mm -hmm. I, we're going to do that Virtual again. Wave. We're going to do the wave again. Yeah. And remember, we're doing a. Um, we're going to be looking at portfolio reviews tomorrow, so yes. I'm super excited for that. Yes. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, Joanne. It's been thank a joy. Thank you. Oh, and thank, thank you. you to the chat. Thank you, chat, for joining for us. Just like stick through the whole thing. Yeah, that yeah. That was fun. Good for you guys. Yeah. Um, but anyways, thank you again, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys. <laughs>